my tether saddle and come out and hunt with him, bring a camera. Um, luckily, the wind is blowing in her face. We got it's kind of calm, but it's windy at the same time every once in a while. Um, we jumped three deer as we was coming in, three does. And then the only time we seen a squirrel was about all we were up to see so far. It's been kind of slow, but it should be good in here about 6 37 o'clock is about right at dark hopefully so hopefully he'll kill a big one here a little bit stay tuned well we just got into ohio we're on our way over to the sterling fur and tool woods where we get a lot of our glass bait jars and lure jars for the season um we, we just stopped at alma shop the alma shop is busting respectfully it's like the best thing in the world even though apparently they got bought out or changed their name or whatever i don't care i'm always going to call them bunch of, shop. bunch of communists i wonder what aaron and ben are doing right now I thought they were supposed to go hunting or something. But now we're just, we're, we're going to try to let you guys uh, see what the Amish country looks like today. I know that a lot of you may not never have been there before, depending on where you live. But it's very, very flat. A lot of Amish people, a lot of pretty cool looking land. We were really, were we were hoping that we were going to be able to get some footage of the inside of uh, Sterling Fur and Tool Shop. But... They're not open on Saturdays. I'm just going there. They've got a drop-off location. I'm going to pick up our stuff. But if you're ever in their location, go in there and give them a holler. They, uh, as far as I know, on the East Coast, they're probably the biggest trapping supply wholesaler dealer that, that, that there is. The only two in the America that I even know about that might be bigger than them is Minnesota Trapline and uh, F&T. But stay tuned. We'll keep, we'll keep you posted. We'll have some more for you here in a little bit. Sexy beast. This is a magical end for all trappers of all kinds. Near. How terrifying. 
Well, we just left Sterling. It is freezing cold up here. We left the house this morning and it was like, I don't know, what do you think, 60 degrees? Yeah. And we're about three hours north of the house and it went from 60 to 40. And me and Drew are both wearing shorts and flip flops. So, you know, that was amazing. It's a good thing we didn't buy more than what I did. I was going to buy more, but the car is plumb loaded. I didn't realize how much space that all this stuff that we picked up was going to take up. But I've not heard anything from Aaron and Ben, so I don't know if they've killed, killed anything or not. We didn't kill crap. It's definitely, I mean, if it's this cold back home, it's probably cold enough to hang a deer, so it'd be a good day to kill one. Oh, yeah. And Drew decided that he's going to release some mixtapes. So, be looking for those. They're going to be just the most amazing, horrifying songs you've ever heard in your life, with such hit classics as Waffle House. Hey man, Waffle House is good stuff. Yeah, uh, a Waffle House and Omelette Shop, man, you can't go wrong. We're on our way over to, what's it called? Is it Sugar Creek or is it Walnut Creek? Walnut Creek. Creek. Well, Walnut Creek cheese. Drew said he wanted a milky shake. So we're going to go over there and I'm going to get Drew his milkshake. My hand smells like fried rice. Your hand smells like fried rice? Yes. Why does your hand smell like fried rice? Well, I've been cooking a lot of fried rice recently. That's random. I mean, serious though. It smells like soy sauce. It smells like soy sauce. Lots of Amish people out today. Then there was a car wreck we passed earlier, so that was interesting. It went to like a 10 foot deep ditch. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know if the video is going to do it justice, but that, that trunk of that hood of that car was in like a 10 foot deep ditch. That's a nice bass boat. And don't get me wrong, it's really, you know, where we live, it's all mountains and the roads are all curvy, so it's weird being out here where everything is straight as an arrow. I don't know how people wreck out here. Yeah, I don't either, that's what I'm saying. Like, the roads are all dead straight. You gotta be tweaking out, man. But, it's, yeah, I mean, honestly, I like coming out here a couple times a year just because, you know. Change the scenery. It's, it's yeah, it's a change of scenery. It's totally different than anything than what we're used to. And I'll tell you right now, if I if I did live like if anyone's watching this and you live in in the plains of Ohio or anywhere else, I guess I'm telling you right now, if I lived out here, I'd be road trapping. I mean, all these ditches and culverts. I mean, I I know coons ain't worth a lot, but man, you could just slay the coons out here. So many cornfields, and it looks like it'd be really good for rat too. Don't take my word for that. I don't live out here, but man, those all the ditches, it looks like it'd be full of rats. And we just saw a bobcat back there about an hour ago. Yeah, I didn't get to see it, but Drew did. I wish I would have. Hanging around the cornfield by a big old oak tree. Searching around it, probably looking for mice or something. I don't know. I don't know what they eat out here. Usually they eat birds where we live at. A lot of squirrels. Oh, we saw two black squirrels too, didn't we? Oh, yeah. That's something I'd like to get a hold of is a black squirrel. Not even to keep it for the fur, just as a pet. They look really pretty. Yeah, there were two of them chasing each other around a tree. <clears throat> but no, we should be good and stocked up for at least the first half of the year. We got, I think I picked up about a thousand bait jars and two or three thousand um, uh, one ounce lure bottles. So we should be good for at least a couple months, hopefully. We picked up where we're going to start carrying. Um, uh, Hall bakers. We've got all. We don't have all their lures, but we've got most of them now. That's the other thing we picked up today. So if you're needing some hall bakers, and you're down there around the Rockport area, hit us up. Either that or any of the shows that we go to. But we've got about 45 minutes till we make it back down to Walnut Creek. So we'll go ahead and hop off here and catch you here in a little bit. Gonna get me a milky shake. A milky shake.
here she is. Drew likes that cheese, don't you? I do like cheese. Cheese is busting, man. Don't diss on the cheese. All right, well, we just got done at Walnut Creek Cheese. We weren't going to film in there, but the milkshakes are good. Milkshakes are real good. I already drank all mine. You already drank? Dude, that was how? That's terrifying. I'm going to suck your soul. But if you're ever over here near Berlin, Ohio, I mean, any anywhere in the Amish country, all the stores are good, but if you're anywhere near Wal Walnut Creek Cheese, you need to go in there. To <coughs> and they don't just have cheese. They've got all kinds of other good stuff. But we got a car full of traps and a car full of cheese. And a, far and a car full of fat people. Yep, so I wonder if Aaron's killed anything yet. Mm. Hopefully we can get home and we'll have some deer steak and cheese. But we're on the road. We'll be back home probably here in about two and a half hours. We'll get back and see if Aaron has been killed or anything. If I was a betting man, I'd say that they haven't. But it's definitely cold enough to kill one and get it hung up. Milkshake be busting respectfully. Respectfully. I'm facing that post. <laughs> Did that shut it off? No, it didn't either. That's amazing. <laughs> well, guys, I guess for I guess I guess we're getting off. Mm. Poor camera. Alrighty guys, we're back. I just we got back from Sterling and met up with Ben and Aaron, seeing how they was doing on the hunt this morning. Dropped Drew off back at the shop and he's gonna unload some of the stuff we got from Sterling and then he's got some work he's gotta do in the studio. In the meantime, I'm gonna run down to Elizabeth. Cause my buddy Adam, he's got about five hundred and fifty pound of wax dirt made that I need to pick up and get packaged up and ready to sell. But yeah, once we get down there, I'm going to talk to him. We might see if he can give everybody kind of an insight on how wax dirt's made in case you're interested in making your own. It is a... I've never made it myself. I've watched him make it and I've bought it off of him. and We both used it. It's good stuff. It's a game changer, really. But it does take a lot of work. Um, he's going to go into more detail about that here in just a little bit. But a lot of good things going on. Season's coming in here within the next... 30 days and I know that there are already some states around the country it's already started so 
trying to get caught back up on stock so that whenever orders come up we can have them ready to send them out keep all of our retail locations in stock so stay tuned we'll talk a little bit on how wax dirt's made and you can meet Adam and we'll go from there all right well we're down here in Adam's fur shed and he's going to talk a little tiny bit about how he makes wax dirt and the advantages to using wax dirt over just regular dirt or even peat moss this is how I do it everybody does things different I like to make mine on top of my wood stove that way if you make them in a concrete make sure if you got you got to get the moisture out of dirt mainly but I've made some in the concrete mixer and I made some on my stove and the stuff that comes off my stove comes way out I mean it's just way better you got a lot finer stuff it's a lot finer and the stuff you get in your mixers they tend to have little beads in them and I just I just don't like the way they look yeah I don't like it but it still works getting but some leaves in here on the dirt that's right, it'll blow off. so so why is it that a couple years ago you decided to start using wax dirt over just regular dirt or peat moss I was tired of fighting the winter this stuff is amazing I've caught stuff when it was zero degrees outside and then when I go to pull my traps up in February when it's sometimes when it's freezing cold and I'd snap it off and the dust flies you, you put this over top of your trap, bed your trap real good. This stuff packs pretty good on top of your trap and you don't have no issues. But the main thing is, is you don't want to do dirt holes. You want to keep flat sets because it lets the water roll right off of it. If you, if you do your bowl or whatever, the water will set right on top of it and it'll freeze, but the underneath won't freeze. But the main stuff in the wintertime is do flat sets. This stuff works amazing. This stuff works great for that. So it's freeze proof, it's waterproof, and it just all around helps you catch more animals. Absolutely. Puts, puts more fur in the boat or in the back of the buggy. That's all that matters. End of the day. Well, here within the next week or two, we're going to be down here again doing a little bit of a demo on how to wax and dye traps. So if you want, you can join us on that one. You can watch a whole bunch of retards sitting around a fire having a good time. But that's the importance of wax dirt. That's how it's made. That's why it's made. And that's why people use it.